everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiber Flux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet this beautiful strawberry gelato scarf. This is a fun and bright scarf, and it's made with some cotton yarn, so it's nice and cool. It's narrow um, and made with cool cotton, so it's really designed to be kind of an in-between-the-season scarf, which is perfect for right now as we're moving from summer to fall. So this scarf, um, you can make it as long as you want. I made this one a little long to kind of wrap around. It's, it can be like an accessory scarf indoors or just a little something as there's a little bit of coolness in the air. Now this scarf is three and a half inches wide. So it's a, it's a real like narrow scarf. You can wrap it around a couple times and it's 74 inches long. So it has some nice length to it. Now later in the video, I am gonna show you how to do multiples. So if you wanna make this scarf wider, you can make it wider and you can work more rows to make the scarf, scarf longer as well. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna show you every stitch of the way. I also wanted to mention that you can find the ad-free version of this pattern um, in my Etsy shop. The link is down below if you'd like to get a copy of that. And also the free version is on my blog as well. So the links to those are below. If you join our Patreon uh, Gold Pattern Club, um, you can have access to this pattern as well on there too. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a tape measure is super helpful if you wanna customize it and get the exact size that you need. We're gonna be using a 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey in the Lime. I'll put the link down below in a coupon code if you'd like to get one for yourself. And then you'll need one ball of Lion Brand's Pima cotton yarn, and this is called the Cabaret. It's like a bright pink colorway. We're gonna use one ball of this. Each ball is 186 yards, 170 meters, 3.5 ounces, and 100 grams. It is 100% cotton. It's a, a yarn that's um, uh, like a soft dishcloth yarn almost. So it's nice like when the weather is transitioning over. It's just a really nice little scarf to have. And um, this is machine wash and dry. If you need to substitute yarn, look for a medium four on the yarn weight scale. Look for the little ball of yarn with a number in the center. We're gonna look for a four medium on the yarn weight scale. And one that recommends the 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook. Now, as a side note, this yarn does come in dye lots. So if you wanna make your scarf wider or longer and use more yarn for this, uh, just make sure you match the dye lot so you get a nice even color transition when you join a new ball of yarn. So Lion Brand Pima Cotton. Now this is also sold at Furls, so the coupon code will apply to both the yarn and the hook. And again, the links can be down, found down below for that. So let's get started. So to begin, we're going to start by putting a slip knot on our hook. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up that loop and tighten. Now our scarf is very narrow, and I'm gonna grab the example here. It's a, like a little narrow accessory scarf. So we are gonna use um, a chain of 17. Now if you need to change that chain, if you need to make the width different, you could make it um, narrow like the one we're gonna be making, or you can make it a wider, more traditional scarf. You could even make it really wide and do a shawl, or very, very wide and even do a blanket. So you can just change the multiples as much as you need to to get the width that you're after, and your tape measure will come in handy as you're doing your starting chain as well. So our multiple is four plus one for this scarf. If you're not familiar with that concept, when you're doing your starting chain, just go in groups of four. So four plus four plus four plus four and so forth until you get about the width that you need and then add one more chain onto that. So we're gonna do a multiple of four plus one, okay? So we put our slip knot on our hook and we're gonna chain 17 for this scarf. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the loop, that's one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. So here is our starting chain. You don't want to make your chains too tight. If you're having trouble with that, go up a hook size for just your starting chain and then go back to the eye hook for the rest of your scarf. Again, you can change the multiple if you would like to change the width of this scarf. So let's move on to row one. For row one, we're gonna work in the sixth chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count. So we're gonna go one, 
two, three, four, five, and six. So in that sixth, sixth chain, that's a mouthful, from the hook, we're gonna work our first little group of stitches here. So in that chain, we're gonna work a double crochet to begin. So wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into that sixth, sixth chain <laughs> from the hook, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Now we're going to chain two, one, two, and then in that same chain, we're gonna work another double crochet, okay? So go right in there, work another double crochet. Then what we're gonna do, is let me just get some of this out of your way here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip three chains. So one, two, three, and then in that next chain, we're gonna do the same thing. So work a double crochet, then chain two, then another double crochet, okay? So we're just repeating what we did back there. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip three chains once again. One, two, three, and in the chain after that, do the same thing. So work a double crochet, chain two, and double crochet all in that same chain. Okay, so now you'll have three chains left. Skip the next two chains, and in that very last, last chain, we're gonna work a double crochet to finish off the row. So because this is a more narrow scarf, the rows, you kind of work through the rows really quick. Okay, so row one is complete. So next what we're gonna do for row two is we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and we're gonna turn our work. Now it doesn't look like a whole lot right now, but we're gonna start putting some other stitches. We created a row of V's. See, there's a V here, and a V, and a V. We're gonna start putting some stitches in the center of these V's. Okay, so in that first chain two space is what it's called in the pattern. That first V that you see, remember we did a chain two in between those double crochets? That created a V. So we call that the chain two space in the pattern. So in that chain two space, we're gonna work four double crochets in that space. So one double crochet, all in the same space. Two double crochet, three double crochet, and four double crochet, all in that same chain two space, the center of the V, just like that. So it adds a little bit of uh, mass in the middle of that V, okay? So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop over to the next V that we see, the chain two space, and we're gonna do the same thing. So work four double crochet in that chain two space. One, two, three, and four in that space. Okay, we have one more V that we're gonna be working into. So hop over to that next V, the last V, and we're gonna work four double crochets into that V, that chain two space. So one, two, three, and four, just like that. Then what we're gonna do is in the turning chain space. So when we did our turning chain here, it created a space on the side. So that kind of big hole right there, that turning chain space, we're gonna work a double crochet right into the space. Just like that, okay? Now what we're gonna do is move on to row three. So row two was super easy. Now for row three, what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain four and turn. Now if you notice, there's an extra chain. So far we've been doing a chain three and turn, this is gonna be a chain four and turn, just as a side note. So chain four, one, two, three, four, turn your work, and then what we're gonna do, so just, as, just again, as a side note, we did an extra chain here because that turn, this turning chain has one extra chain because this is gonna form the first part of the V of the row. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, there's first two double crochets. So you had one here from the previous row, and then you have one here that's part of that first grouping. So that makes a little space there. See that, that first like hole that you come to? 
work a double crochet into that space and that will form our first V of the row, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip over this grouping of four double crochets and then in the space in between these two groupings here, see we have a, a group here, and we have a group here, and there's a space in the middle. What we're gonna do is work a double crochet into that space. Double crochet, chain two, and a double crochet all in that, that same space. Next, skip over the next four double crochets and we're gonna do the same thing. In that space in between that grouping of four double crochets and that grouping of four double crochets, we're gonna do the same thing, make a V. So right in that space, work a double crochet, chain two, one, two, and a double crochet, just like that. So we're sort of building on what we've done in the previous row. And then what we're gonna do is in the turning chain space at the end here, so that last group of four double crochets, and we had our turning chain, right in between there is the turning chain space. So in that space, we're gonna work a double crochet. Whoops, there we go, my yarn split a little bit. And then this time, just a chain one and a double crochet, all in that same space, okay? So row three is complete. It's starting to look really neat. The stitches look um, very pretty. It kind of has a lattice look. Okay, so let's move on to row four. So for row four, we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and turn our work. So that first V that you come to, uh, that was made with a chain one space, remember from the previous row. In that chain one space from the previous row, we're gonna work two double crochets into that space, so one, and two, and then we're gonna skip two of the double crochets. So there was one there and one there. So the center of this first V here, we're gonna work four double crochets into the center of that V, that chain two space. So one, two, three, and four. Hop over to the next V and work four double crochets into that space. One, two, three, and four. And now we're towards the end of the row here. So to finish off row four, we're gonna go back to that, remember that turning chain space. In that turning chain space, we're gonna work three double crochet this time. So one, two, and three. Okay, we have one more row to do and that will be our pattern repeat. So it's starting to look really pretty, I love it. Okay, so for row five, what we're gonna do there, let me get a little bit more yarn to get us going. For row five, our last row we're gonna learn about is to chain three, one, two, three, and turn our work. Then we're gonna skip, remember those first three double crochets we did? We're gonna skip over them. And in that space before the next grouping you come to, we're gonna work a V. So remember, double crochet, chain two, one, two, and a double crochet, all in that same space. Just like that. Then we're gonna skip over that group of four double crochets, and in that space in between those two groupings, we're gonna work a V. So double crochet, chain two, double crochet. Skip over that next grouping of four double crochets like we did before. Okay, and then in that next space, see we have our grouping of four double crochets and then at the end of the row we had a grouping uh, down here. So in that space in between those two groupings, we're gonna do the same thing. Double crochet, chain two, double crochet, okay? And now to finish off row five, what we're gonna do is we're going to work a double crochet once again in that turning chain space. So you can see this little grouping, the smaller grouping of double crochets here, and that turning chain, that space right there, just work a double crochet right into that turning chain space. Okay, so let's look at our beautiful handiwork. I'm just gonna kinda straight, I like to straighten things out every couple of rows or so, just to get everything nice and neat. So here is what we have so far. It looks really pretty. So what you're gonna do to keep going with your scarf 
is to just repeat rows two and five, or two through five, excuse me, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, over and over and over again until your scarf is as long as you would like it to be. I'm gonna keep working on my scarf, and when we rejoin, we're going to um, uh, take some measurements, weave in some ends, and uh, kind of wrap our project up. So keep going with rows two through five. If you need to back up the video, please feel free to do that. Also, YouTube has a slow motion feature if you need to slow some things down as well. So keep moving through rows two through five and we'll rejoin in just a minute. Just working that last stitch of the last row. Now, I wanted to point out that I'm ending on row four, um, the more solid row of the, the four double crochet clusters, the one of those rows. Um, just because if you end on one of the V stitch rows, it just look, the edge just looks a little uh, less finished. So I'm gonna end on row four, okay? And I wanted to also show you, I just have this much yarn left from our ball of cotton yarn. So not too bad for one ball of cotton yarn like that. So it makes a really cute scarf. So what we need to do now is just do a little bit of finish work to um, finish up our scarf. So all you're gonna do is wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop all the way. You might need to cut it if you have more yarn left than me. But I'm just gonna get that knot nice and secure. And then we're just gonna weave in the end. So I have my tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. And I'm gonna cut mine just a little bit just to make the end more manageable. Thread the tapestry needle. And then what we're gonna do is just weave in the ends. So just go into those loops. Now this scarf is pretty reversible, so you can um, just make sure when you're weaving your ends, you kind of stay in the middle of those stitches. So go in one direction, then you can come back in the other direction with your needle. And give it a little trim. And then do the same on the other side. Now, if you did stripes or had to add a new ball of yarn, you may have more tails, but we just have two here. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the other tail. Now this had our starting chain, so I'm gonna sort of sew it up to a more solid fabric area of our scarf here. So now I can sort of let it travel up into this V and then we can go up here. So anytime you have like a real lacy open area, just kind of like sew it through until you get to an area where you can weave it. Okay, and I'm just gonna go in one direction, come back in the other. I like to do that to kind of lock that tail into place. And then we're gonna give it a little snip. And our scarf is complete and it's really fun and bright. And I love the idea of a cotton scarf to kind of help you transition from one season to the next. And cotton yarn comes in so many beautiful colors. So that is how you crochet the strawberry gelato scarf. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.